Hey everybody, it's Zach from My Shire Farm and we are back again with another video to help you on your journey with Caternix quail and becoming more self-sufficient. In this video, we're gonna be talking about all about the colors. This is a playlist that we're doing on our YouTube channel and we here at My Shire Farm are breaking down every color that we have and giving you all the information we have researched throughout the years. Average egg size, average weight at full maturity, uh, lifespan, um, how to get the color, how to sex them, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so I'm very excited about it and it seems to be going very well. And today's video is about the scarlets. Now one of these is a scarlet and one of these is actually a range. And we are gonna go in depth on what is what and what the differences are and why we consider scarlet and range to pretty much be the same color. And so that's how we sell them on our website, which you can check out at myshirefarm.com. Uh, before I go any further, if you will be so kind to just hit the like button and support the channel, I would greatly appreciate it, as well as subscribe to the channel and hit that bell. That bell will give you notifications on when we post videos, and I have a lot of videos to come. Tuesdays, we do random videos. Thursdays, we're doing all about the color videos. Saturdays, we're doing a quail for profit playlist. And Sundays, we go live every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we do a live question and answer. So you ask the questions, and we do our best to help you on your journey with Caternix Quail by answering those questions. So make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Without boring you any further, let's go in to the Scarlet, shall we? Now, other than the wilds, Scarlets are used on at My Shire Farm more than any other color. And we're gonna go into all of that information at the end of this video, so stay tuned. But this is what they're gonna look like. Calm down. There we go. So this is a Scarlet. And this is a range. And I only have one hand each, but uh, let's do one at a time just so you can see the difference. So this is what they call range. I'll show you the front. There you go. And they're starting to get a little upset with me. And this scarlet is really upset with me. There we go. And so that is what they look like. Now let's go into some information about the scarlets and then we're gonna get into how to get the color, what you can get from this color and why it is our second largest, our second most important color here at My Shire Farm. So how to sex them. These are not feather sexable. So that is one of the downsides of the scarlets because I prefer feather sexable quail than non feather sexable quail because I hate vent sexing. But we do have videos on our YouTube channel on how to vent sex. So if you need to know how to do that, we have videos for that as well. So check that out, which is another reason why you should like this video. Um, so that means that you can't tell whether they're male or female until they're about six weeks old. Now, if you're uh, accustomed to Caternix quail and vent sexing, six weeks is an easy thing to do. If you're just getting started, I recommend starting out at week eight and then you can move yourself back to week six because sometimes they can be tricky, especially getting started. Uh, but between six and eight weeks, you'll vent sex and you can determine male from female. The average weight of the scarlets is 8.7 ounces for the males and 9.2 ounces for the females. So I would say that they're a medium sized quail, which is nice. They're not jumbos, but they're not small uh, by any means. The average egg size is nine to 10 grams, which is a little on the lower side, but I've got some really good information about that. They produce between 310 and 320 eggs a year which is higher than any other average that we have here at My Shire Farm. So even though the eggs are a little bit smaller, they are one of the most consistent egg layings, egg laying quail that we possibly have. Not only that, but their average lifespan for production for a regular Caternix quail on average is between one year and nine months to two years. Scarlet's average two years and three months of being full production mode. Uh, so not only do they lay the most, but they lay the longest as well, which is also nice. Hatching true. You can hatch scarlets 100% true. We do not here at My Shire Farm because of our specific breeding program. 
So with that being said, about 90 to 95% will hatch true. The other five to 10% will hatch out Pharaoh, Egyptian, or a scarlet tux every once in a while. That's more random. You, usually it's Egyptian. But again, if you hatch out 100 eggs, 90 to 95 of them are going to be scarlet or range. Um, the other five to 10% would be the other colors I already mentioned. Now, as far as scarlet and range goes, we have them together in the same pen because we consider them to be the same color, which again, I will get to in just a few minutes on the reasons why. But we did do research on that as well, and it looks like you get about 20% range and 80% scarlet of what hatches out of the ones that hatch true, if that makes sense. I think I said that wrong, but I think you can, I think you got it. Um, let's see, the average hatch rate, so, when we ship out eggs all throughout the US, uh, we ask for feedback. A lot of people, about 60% of people, uh, message me or get onto our live shows every Sunday and give us uh, updates on the hatch rates. And we keep that record all year, all year long. So our average hatch rate on shipped eggs for the Scarlets this year is 77.2%, which is fantastic. It's one of the highest ones that we have. Um, so, Obviously, the Scarlets are uh, very high in production. They uh, produce longer than any other Caternix that we have. Um, and uh, it carries the Rue gene, which is the next step. So that is it. So I'm gonna tell you the difference between Scarlet and Range, and then I'm gonna tell you how to get the color. So the Scarlet is this one right here. It's a beautiful color. And uh, pretty much a scarlet is pretty much a red quail and not a lot of markings, no markings on the back whatsoever and a little bit of marking on, on the chest, but not really. Um, so this is a scarlet and there's no markings. This is a range and it does have a little bit of markings um, on the chest and on uh, the back. You can maybe see that hopefully. And that is pretty much the difference. So I'm, I'm gonna break it down on how I got it explained to me a long time ago. And long story short is we already have videos on Tibetans and Rosettas. So you can check those out if you'd like. It's also under the playlist on our YouTube channel, My Shire Farm. The playlist is called All About the Colors. Tibetans are pretty much one dark quail. There's no markings on it. It's just a dark, dark, almost black quail when it hatches and then it lightens up to a very dark brown. That's a Tibetan. The Scarlet is pretty much the Rue de Loot of a Tibetan, which means it's the redhead. Rue means red. And so like we have an Egyptian video as well. The Egyptian is the redhead of the wilds. The Scarlet is the redhead of the Tibetans. Autumn Ambers are the redhead of the Italians and Ranges are the redhead of the Rosettas, which is a video I just did uh, last week on All About the Colors. And the Rosettas are a very dark color, but it's got barring on the back. It's got markings on the back and the front. Uh, they're not feather sexable either, but it's a little bit different than the Tibetans. The Scarlets are the, I'm sorry, the Ranges are the Rue de Loot of the Rosettas. It's the redhead of the Rosetta, and the Scarlet is the redhead of the Tibetan. It's pretty much what it is. But because it's such a red color, it's very hard to, to cipher between them. Uh, if they're about three to five feet away, you can't tell the difference. So we consider them to be one color because uh, there's really not that much difference in between them. And we're not trying to go into all these varieties and variations of the same exact color. Um, we like it to be more general and you'll get a couple uh, varieties that pop out, which is fun. So how to get the color? Well, you need the Rue gene to do that. The reason why we use the Scarlet more than any other color except for the wilds is because of the Rue gene. It's a pure Rue gene. It's a pure red color, right? So we got the Rue gene uh, from Scarlet's that we hatched out randomly from our SSCs, which was cool. And we took that Scarlet and started building that, uh, that up. Once we had those Scarlet's and we got our base done, we started working with other colors. So we put Scarlet's and Wilds together, and that's how we got our Egyptians. We put Scarlet's and Italians together, and that's how we got our Autumn Ambers. Because when you put the Rue male, when you put the red male over a hen of another color, 
you'll get a reddish version of the hen. So for example, if the hen is wild and the, the, the male is red, then you will get Egyptian. If you put the red male with the Italian hens, you'll get autumn ambers, which look like Italian, only they're red. Um, so we really like the Rue gene. We've created a lot of colors or improved a lot of colors by using the red, the, the red gene, the Rue gene. So we have Egyptians, we have um, a new color we'll be introducing soon. We're starting a new color that will also introduce the Rue gene. Uh, we have sex links because of the Rue gene. You need the, the Rue gene to produce sex links and we have those. Uh, we've got the Egyptian fees that, uh, that have the Rue gene in it. Uh, autumn ambers, like I've mentioned. I mean, we use the Rue gene a lot. Uh, because it's just a, a real fun color to work with. And they're very consistent layers and it and it that transfers to the new color that you introduce the Rue to. They start producing much better. Uh, to get the Rue gene, you actually have to get it from somewhere. You can't just create that. You can't put wild and wild together and somehow get the Rue gene. So um, you could get the Rue gene from Egyptians or autumn ambers or anything else that we've created because of the Rue gene. But honestly, the scarlet is the best way to breed with it. So if you're trying to breed for colors and you're trying to breed new stuff, the scarlet is an absolute must, as well as the jumbo wilds. Um, you can get a ton of colors just by that scarlet by itself. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, so hopefully that answers all of your questions. If you have any, make sure you join me Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we go live for your questions and answers, as well as hit the like button and support the channel because I would greatly appreciate it. It makes me feel better. It helps the YouTube channel. And we have a lot of great videos coming your way. Saturday, I'm posting another uh, Quail for Profit video and uh, you will not want to miss it. It is my favorite rule and uh, we'll be going in depth about that. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell. So stay tuned. I've got a lot of great stuff coming your way. And until next time, stay safe, everybody.